In our next catch up with an NK patron, we speak to actor Will Meller. Many people will have seen that over the lockdown period, Will tragically lost his father Bill to cancer. And he talks to us about dealing with this loss at such a unique time. Will talks about how he's keeping busy in lockdown, including his podcasts with former Two Pints of Lager and a Packet of Crisps colleague Ralph Little, simply called Two Pints with Will and Ralph. And there's a memory of his very first performance ever, which was indeed at the Forum Theatre as a child. And he also recounts the moment he copied Paul Gascoigne's hairstyle, which incredibly changed his life forever. An absolute favourite of everyone at NK, it's the one and only Mr Will Meller. So I'm delighted to be talking to Will Meller. How are you, Will? I'm not too bad, pal, thanks. From your personal point of view, it's it's been a, a bit of a horrific time, really, hasn't it, with, with obviously your dad passing away. Such a shock for everyone. Yeah, it's been tough, mate. Uh, this whole lockdown thing's been like a bit of a nightmare uh, with with that just made it worse um, it just it made um, what was a bad situation even worse because in that si- in, the, in the situation that uh, when he fell ill I couldn't I couldn't go and do what you naturally would do yeah. and that's go and be with your family yeah. um, I had to stay at home and hope for the best and then um, uh, I did make the journey up to see him because he, he got some test results that weren't great news so yeah. I thought well I'm not I have to go and see him um, I couldn't hug him uh, I just in the garden and talked to him and that was the last time I saw him and he died within two weeks of that so it was really fast and hard and it still is hard um, and it's yeah this whole situation has been quite a strange 10-12 weeks um, but that, that thrown into the mix was really tough yeah I mean from everyone here because obviously we saw your dad a lot you know we couldn't go in the cafe without him sitting there doing his uh, crosswords Every and day. stuff so yeah. Yeah, it's, it, and like you said, it was just it was just crazy. And I was speaking to to Cheryl about the funeral, and um, she mentioned about obviously because people couldn't obviously attend the funeral, literally you know people clapping as as, as he was leaving and on you know on his way, um, and she said that was like a lovely tribute, really. You yeah, know. always all the way down Ben Bent's Lane uh, outside the Queens and the Rat Pit. And- uh, all the way down Bensley in Bradbury, where obviously he used to go play darts for the Queens, play darts for the Rat Pit, and oh, right. uh, he lived round he lived round here uh, in Bradbury, you know, for a very long time all my life. So um, yeah, uh, yeah, it was all the people coming out and clapping him and throwing roses out, and uh, loads of old faces that I grew up with and he knew and his friends, and it was it was touching. It really was. It was hard. To, it was amazing, but it yeah. was quite difficult you know, at the same time it was a tough day but yeah. it's a memory I'll keep because uh, uh, because of the lockdown that people couldn't come to the funeral they, they made the effort to come out and pay the respect so it was it was amazing to see yeah a lovely thing and and you know like you say a, a great tribute really with with all those people doing what they could um yeah, exactly. at the time and sticking to the rules so, so where are you at the moment well I'm at home I live in Buckinghamshire um just outside London um place uh, near Burnham Beaches um so it's not too far from Windsor, uh, about 15, 20 minutes from Windsor. It's, um, yeah, so I live here because um, uh, I need to be near London, but I don't really like London. It's too busy for me. Oh, really? So I've, got, I've got like a village life uh, <laughs> and uh, me and my wife and two kids. And um, it's been it's been actually okay in lockdown here because it's, um, it's a nice part of the world. It's, it has some good weather and we've, we've been lucky enough that the weather's been nice so we can utilise the garden, go out for walks. And, yeah. You know, do bits and bobs. Have, um, have you been doing much homeschooling of the kids? No, my wife's been doing the homeschooling. I'm crap at that. I wasn't good at school when I was there. Never mind now. <laughs> I for, if, if I knew anything, I forgot it all. I mean, I'm, good, I'm not too bad with maths, but the maths that my, my daughter's doing and my son's doing, I'm like, I don't even understand the word of it. Well, that's it. Like, when we were at school, we did it this way. What's all this here? Drawing a box I, and... I know. X and Y makes T. I was like, I must have been away for the X times table. I don't even know what it is. So, uh, no, I've, I've been... Um, no, I mean it's it's, it's tough. Anyway, my son's more or less left school, which is a bit weird because he's he, he would have been doing his uh, yeah. GCSEs now, and um, and he's so he's he's sort of got away with doing any exams. So in a way, he's chuffed. But yeah. I'm like, it's, a, it's a part of life. I think you should go through. So no, you can look back. No, this is how I dealt with my exams. Or, yeah. Uh, and, and he's not going to leave school, he's just going to peter out. And that's just a bit of a shame because it's a big moment leaving school. It is, isn't it? Yeah. And, and like you say, a big change. And, you know, who knows what happens with the exams and, you know, um, how, how it's all going to work out. It's it's a bizarre it's a bizarre situation. So yeah. from a from a work point of view then, well, I know, I know kind of one of the main things you've been doing. I don't really know if you class it as work even, but it's the all the, the podcast stuff that you've been doing with Ralph. And, um, yeah, we... Um, 
we've set some up a while back. I've been trying to get something going with Ralph for about a year, just because the two pints audience and fans were sort of wanting us to bring it back for a yeah. special. And it's just because the politics behind getting the cast back together is too difficult. Sheridan Smith, I haven't spoken to for four years. She's got her own life. She does her right. own thing, and she, we couldn't get. You know, I don't think she'd even agree to talk about it. So I just I said, well, if it's not the original cast, we can't do it. Um, so um, I said it'd be good if we, could, me and Ralph, could do something together talk about the old days and yeah. sat in a pub and yeah. uh, so we recorded a few of them uh, at first the first two sat in a pub we found a pub that my mate owns Dick Pickard actually owns it from Hollyoaks who plays Tony oh, right, it's a okay. pub called the Chilled Eskimo in London um, and the, the chairs and tables look very much like the two pints at the bar behind and um, and it's, it's only open weekend so in the week we went and recorded a couple of podcasts and it's called Two Pints with Will and Ralph yeah. and we sit we have a couple of beers and we talk about life like you would in a pub uh, a bit of banter have a bit of fun um, uh, and we cover everything really and we talk about the old days and the people we've met and you know it's uh, it's a post watershed because we don't mind the language we, oh. do, we say whatever we feel right. um, <laughs> and people have enjoyed it because I think in this situation on lockdown people are missing the pub yeah. people are missing banter yeah. you know especially you need some, people need a bit of a laugh and, um, and it's going really well we've recorded I think and the fourth one came out today um, um, and, it's, and we're doing lockdown episodes now because obviously we can't get to the pub, but we yeah. will be going back in the pub. So is it just the normal kind of platforms that everyone can listen to it? You know, if they want to kind of download the podcast yeah, and stuff. Yeah, Acast, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast, it's called Two Pints with Will and Ralph. And the reason why we use the Two Pints, a because obviously they know what's from Two Pints Lager, but yeah. um, we, we we basically we have a couple of beers. So we said, well, we're having, two, we're having a couple of pints. Yeah, we'll yeah. have a chat. And yeah. So whenever, whenever we get a guest on, they've got to have a pint. So everyone who comes on, they've got to have a pint or something. Oh, even right. if they're not drinkers, you can have a pint of water if you want, but you've got to have a pint. Uh, um, even in lockdown, Ralph, Ralph had no beer, and I couldn't believe it. What? I've, 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 I've not done anything else but drink beer since lockdown started. <laughs> and he's not been drinking, so... He had a pint of water and then a pint of tea, and I said, well, we can't have that anymore, so we had to, we had to get some beer sent in. A pint of tea. But, <laughs> uh, but no, it's a good bit of banter. Um, yeah. And it's not, and we've, we've got guests that will be coming on. We had our first guest on the other day who, um, I, I don't want really to go into too much of it because if no, people don't give it away. Podcast, it won't make sense. Right. But, yeah, there'll be other guests on, actors and different people. And, and, and I mean, eventually we'd like to get it onto a TV show Yeah. Uh, and make get our own. TV show setting like a pub where we could have a band on and guests on sat in the pub having a few beers and I think it'd be a great bit of banter a bit like a TFI Friday used to be um, in the good old days and, and we're thinking of doing a theatre tour as well where we're coming around to all the theatres and obviously we'll come to Romney Ford because I'm a patron there and that's where I started my career so I'd like to bring you back there and maybe get me and Ralph on stage that'd be amazing a and, um, and Q&A and have a few beers. Yeah, that'd be great. Well, I'm at, I'm literally at the theatre now, so I'm looking through my window in the office and I'm looking at that stage. Um, and, I mean, how how many years ago would it be that you kind of first appeared on that stage? Oh, God, uh, must must be... A long 30, time. 40, 30, 35 years ago, maybe. It's crazy, isn't it? Just time... Yeah, about 30 years ago. I was probably about 10, 10 11. And I, I was, yeah, I'm 44 now, so... Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was probably about 10. I can't remember exactly the time. Probably about 10, 11. I remember I was I was played a soldier in Nutcracker and the Mouse King. Some, Bit of ballet. Some take on a ballet. <laughs> uh, and I, I had to kill a rat, and she was too big for me to drag her off stage. I couldn't get her off, so she had to get up and walk off. <laughs> I'll never forget it. Bit of I, was, I, had to, I had to stab her. I was like a soldier in a toy cabinet. I was like a toy soldier. I had to come out and fight these evil rats. And I had to stab this girl. And she fell on the floor. And I tried to drag her. And I couldn't move her. I was too small. Yeah. <laughs> she had to get up and walk off stage. Bit of artistic uh, license there, then, for everyone. Yeah, yeah. You just have to go with it. But, um, no, it was, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was the first time I was on stage and it was in, in, in Robbie's Forum. In terms of the mediums that you do, you do a lot of different types. Have you got a preference of you know, the kind of work that you like to be doing. I mean, obviously, you know, you do, you've done a lot of TV and, you know, is stage more more that you'd, you'd like to kind of get more out of, do you think? Or? Um, I'm, I've, this, this year, especially now when we dad passing away, I've just opened my eyes up and my hands up to whatever. I'm yeah. just thinking, you know, because I, I, I've said no to quite a lot of stuff doing because my agents and that are like, if you do this, then you won't get this drama because this, you know, they want to put you in the drama market now. Right. And if you do too much comedy or if you do too much for a bit of juice, or if you do, and I'm sick of saying, I'm sick of listening to or what I should and shouldn't. I'm just going to do whatever I feel now. And um, I've done, I mean, I've done, I've, I've done more or less everything that I've wanted to do. I've been very, very lucky yeah. with doing com- great comedies and 
big big dramas like Broadchurch and Line of Duty and obviously no offence yeah the comedies of Two Pints Lager and White Van Man and in with the Flins and I did a musical for a few years where I met my wife in Manchester and, and London and uh, so I'm, I'm I just I'm quite lucky looking forward to being myself so I'm hoping to do some more factual stuff maybe All right. my own like travel show tour guide sort of things yeah. going around the country in a camper van having a bit of a laugh looking at different parts of the country and finding different pubs and whatever it, it would be just um I did a little series called Where There's a Will that I came up with where I shot it for um, I have a, a group called The Viral Group which is a social media platform okay. um, they have a Facebook, Instagram and, and Twitter account and, um, and I put it on there and it went down well and yeah I'm, I'm looking to be do more stuff of being myself uh, as well as doing the acting because you know, I quite enjoy you know being myself and going out there and seeing the world so Maybe I'm talking to a few channels at the moment to try and maybe get involved and do more of that stuff. Do you think people do pigeonhole you uh, once you've kind of done certain things and, you know, in into a certain area? Is it is it easy to kind of escape that? I mean, you know, if you look at your early career, obviously, with Hollyoaks and, and that sort of stuff. By the way, uh, I, I did a Zoom quiz uh, the other day and it was like Guess the Soap and it was a very old Hollyoaks, which you were in. And I looked at you and I thought, I had to do a double take because you were blonde. At the time, yeah. and I thought, is that is that Eminem? <laughs> yeah, no, he copied me. Oh, is that right? Eminem. Yeah, it was you... a big, it was a big Jambo fan, apparently. Eminem. All right, well, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I honestly had to do a double take because I was like, is that Will or is it is it Marshall Brothers? I can't tell the difference. Yeah, no, yeah, no, it um, they were good times. That's how I got the job with Dad. Please be air blonde on a caravan site. I went for the part in this new show but no one knew what it was yeah. and it was a big thing and I went in there's thousands of people auditioning for it and then I went for the part of Kurt because I had dark hair and I didn't hear anything for for, for like weeks so usually that means you haven't got it so I went on holiday with my sister to a, to um, Towing in, in Wales North Wales to a caravan park Yeah. Uh, and then um, Bleach Be Air Blonde because Gazza had done it you remember Gazza did it in the World Cup yeah then, oh uh, absolutely yeah yeah so I copied him a bit and then they phoned up and said you've got a casting tomorrow Amazing. Uh, and I went, I have to bleach my hair blonde. So I said, you've got to go in. And I went in and Phil Redmond, who was the, the exec producer, saw yeah. me and he went, you should be reading for Jambo. Oh, right. You look, you look so different. Yeah. But I was the only one who had bleached my hair blonde and looked zany and mad. And, and that got me the job, more or less, because it put me into a different bracket that he could see me as. And then I got the casting. And, it, and for my, my life changed that day. The it, day I got the casting, my life changed. It's funny, that, isn't it? Because, you, like you say, you bleach your hair, which made you stand out amongst other people and that kind of got you spotted and it's nothing that you would have done to kind of plan for that is it it's just no i believe in fate as well you know i mean the fact that they even got hold of me because we didn't have mobile phones in them days so no. they had to phone the caravan site so and someone had to find someone at the caravan site who knew where our caravan was <laughs> come and find out where we was to, to then get me to ring this number on a bit of paper <laughs> so it wasn't like nowadays you just get a message on your mobile don't you yeah then, yeah before all that so um yeah, you know, it's. I always believed in myself, um, and in the, in the most least arrogant way, I always believed that I could do it. And I always believed it because I don't. I believe that anything, no matter where you're from, that you can achieve things in your life if if you believe in yourself enough. And I believed that I could do it. And and I'd done a few little acting jobs here and there, and I, and there was I'd done Brookside, and I, I mean I was acting from like eleven and twelve years old. I was on TV from twelve. So yeah. But, to get something that could change your life and needed something long term and longevity and this casting came up and it just happened and, and it was fate and I, I got it. Um and it, and as I say, I was on I got it, I got the job and within a couple of weeks I was driving down the road and there was my face was on bus stops and bus shelters Crazy. and, and in, in magazines and front pages of magazines and for you to for your life to change that quick in a couple of weeks it was just it's was, it was a time you'll never forget it was unbelievable how do you deal with because as an actor you you know you must have had lots of knocks and you talked earlier on there about going for auditions and not hearing back and you know is it is it is it easy still to maintain that belief in yourself even for someone like you who's obviously a well-known actor a well-respected actor do you still have that do you still have to bounce back from things yeah, well, it's different now because what you do is you go you go into different stages where I used to go up for all the castings and you go up against, you know, 100 people or, you know, Hollywood, so it's thousands of people and yeah. different things. But then the more well-known you get or the more jobs you get, and I've been a leading actor of, you know, I've, I've led, you know, loads of different shows as a lead actor. Yeah. You stop going in for the early... So what you do then is you're going for bigger parts. So you're only up against three or four people. Mm -hmm. and, and what happens now in television is, and I've noticed... Is 
there'll, there'll be someone that everyone wants and then they put them on everything so they don't spread them. so so one minute you're hot one minute you're not that's yeah. why you can't believe you know you can't believe in your own nonsense really you can't you can't think oh I made it now because believe me there's always somebody else around the corner and you're going to have you're going to have good times where you're getting loads of work offered and you're going to have times when they might want a different face you yeah. know they might want someone older someone younger a different colour you know that's just that's the game we're in it's, at the moment there's a lot of ethnic minorities being given lead roles which I think is great which yeah. means there's less work out there for me yeah. but it's great it's great for the ethnic minorities that have not been getting a, a shout on TV as lead roles which I think is brilliant um, it just means it makes it a quieter time for, for me so it, it is. It is never easy. My game is always going to be. You never know what's coming, which I find exciting because yeah. I think. Well, I don't know whether the phone could ring tomorrow. And I could be in Doctor Who. You never know, but it can be scary at times because yeah. you think, "What if the phone doesn't ring anymore?" And that's why I'm doing the podcast. Yeah. That's why I'm coming up with my own ideas for shows because I can't wait for the phone to ring. Sometimes I've got to be proactive. I've got to make stuff for myself you've got you've got to be out there with your fishing rod to try and catch you can't just sit there and wait plus i say it, it, you know whilst you you're not getting the calls it's it's an opportunity isn't it for you to be creative yourself and you you've talked there about different ideas you've got for things and you you know the idea of the podcast and the travel shows and everything else and i suppose you wouldn't have that if you were tied down in a you know in a role right now no i wouldn't i wouldn't um i wouldn't because i'd be sat comfortably concentrating on that i mean it's <laughs> You never know, as I say, that this it is a tough game to get into, and that's what I'd say to anybody: is it is not, it's never going to be easy. I mean, I, I mean, it obviously does get easier yeah. if you do touch very, very lucky, and you hit a massive move, and you make millions of pounds, and all yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. But the reality is, it's it, it's tough. Um, um, but the, the the as I say, you never know what's around the corner. You just got to keep believing in yourself, um, and 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 do what do what you think's right. I think all the time, you know, listen to your own. In itself. We've been lucky enough, obviously, to have you down a couple of times and talking to the, you know, to our young members and and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, I find that quite difficult, you know, because I always see myself as them. I think, who yeah. am I to tell these what to do? You know what I mean? Because I, I didn't train. You know what I mean? It's weird. You, how how cru- crucial do you think the training element is? I mean, like I say, you've there jumped up saying I didn't train at all. It was right place, right time, almost. Um, is that something you know in terms of how you talk to young people today? And I know like you say it's not something that you. You, you kind of see yourself as above in any way, but is there is there a certain piece of advice that's been key to you that would be good to them to listen to? Particularly, you talked about confidence, and you look at where we are now, and lots of people's mental health took a bit of a battering, and you know people are very isolated. Is there a message that you'd kind of convey to young people at the moment, particularly creative people? Particularly creative people, I would just say you've got to keep believing in yourself. It's, it's, and, and believe because I, I I believe that as long as I can remember, and this is God's honest truth. I knew I was going to do what I'm doing, or what uh, 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 in performing arts. Yeah, uh, I, I'm telling my mum all the time as a kid, I'm going to be famous. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And, and they sort of look at me and say, well, "What if what if what if you don't? You're going to have to get a normal job, and you're going to have to work. You're going to have to go, we'll do better at school." And I was like, "Don't worry about it. I don't need the school stuff." And it, and it, it was really. I, I mean, and that's not advice I give to anybody. Of course, yeah, I know. Yeah. I believe that everybody has got something in them, and you've got to find out what that is and go and do it because you'll never be truly happy until you do what you're here to do. What scratch that itch? You've got to do it because there's no point in. I mean, obviously. I've had to go and do a, a load of jobs. I was working on the building site. I was working as a roofer or, yeah. to make ends meet in between acting jobs. My dream always stayed on to this isn't forever. I'm just doing this as a stopgap to pay the, pay a few bills. But I'm gonna I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna go and do what I want to do and perform because that's where I'm happiest. And I think I'd say to anybody, never give up on your dreams because you know you'll if you, if you can do something you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah. So you just gotta give, never give up, uh, and I'm always believing yourself because if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else is gonna believe in you. You gotta believe. It doesn't matter where you're from, what colour you are, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Believe in yourself. Every, anything's possible. Uh, well, it's been fantastic just talking to you and hearing you kind of talk like that. And and hopefully when lockdown's over, you'll be able to come back. I know you say you don't like talking to the kids, but they love to. No, I do. I love talking <laughs> to the kids. I just don't ever want to feel like I'm talking. Yeah, like I'm above them. Yeah, no, know, I understand. The day, I come from that background, and I I love sitting in with them, and I can give them advice. Yeah. I just don't ever want to think that what I'm saying is right, what's, what they're doing is wrong. Yeah. It's just I try to give them pointers that I probably would have 
like to have known. Little yeah. things that I've learned along the way doing the job uh, that they might not have thought of. Just helping them out. It's, it's not me. It's, it's not, I, like, I love seeing them and watching them. I love seeing talent, little talented kids. and yeah. Especially that stage you've got there. It's an amazing little space. You, I mean, I think it's fantastic what you've done there. And, uh, and giving people... You know, in that area where I came from, an opportunity to go on stage and scratch that itch and perform. I think it's fantastic what you're doing. Oh, well, well, that's great for you, Tier. And like I say, hopefully next time you're up in Manchester, when, when all this is down, we'll be able to, to, to see you. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll certainly enjoy downloading the, the latest podcast and having a pint myself uh, listening yeah, to have a beer. Have I will, listen. mate. Don't you worry. Yeah, you'll put a smile on your face. Oh, well, nice one, mate. Thank you so much for your time. And you take care and love to all the family, Cheers, mate. Darren. Take care, Thanks buddy. Call, mate. Cheers, mate. Bye.